You want to know what's in this bag? That's what's in this bag. Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade, coming at you with the July edition of Bargain Bag, my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of one mystery CD grab bag, which I assembled from CDs that I bought at Epic Seconds. I bought like a million of them at a time, so I don't remember what's in each bag, even though I assembled the bags myself. But anyway, yes, uh, I, I usually do these as a live stream, but uh, this is a pre-recorded video uh, for two reasons, one of which I've really gotten to like this backdrop here for my Tom's Hit Parade videos, my music-related videos. Uh, not that I've done any Trekkies videos yet, but anyway. Uh, plus, uh, I, I've gotten to do so little editing in my uh, videos anymore that uh, that was kind of the reason why I was doing my bargain bags as live streams, just so that they were completely un unedited. Uh, but anyway, you know, now that I do very little editing anyway in my videos, I figured I'd go ahead and do this one at least as a pre-recorded video. Anyway, um, before I get into opening the new bag, I go, I break down what I found in last month's bag of uh, mystery CDs. Yeah. Last month's grab bag of mystery CDs, because it was a mystery CD grab bag. <laughs> Yay words! Anyway, uh, in rough order from castoffs to keepers, uh, here's what I found. Uh, the, the my least favorite of the bunch was probably All State Champion uh, with their album "Is It Nothing to You." This was pretty much uh, I, I don't know if I'd call it I don't know new metal. I I'm never sure what this you know new metal or post-grunge or any of those things. I kind of throw those words out, not totally knowing what they are, just having a vague idea about what they are. But uh, this is pretty much metal, and their lyrics almost get into the screaming as opposed to the singing, which is which is kind of where I draw the line. If it gets too screamy, that's uh, not screamo, screamy. But anyway, uh, so yeah, I did not care for that one. A little bit too hard, uh, too hard and loud and heavy for my tastes. Uh, then we have um, Unfinished Monkey Business. I love the, the title of that album uh, by Ian Brown. And this one, he was... I looked it up and I cannot remember, cannot remember, remember now uh, who he was the front man for. It was a band. Uh, but this was his uh, first solo album. And uh, didn't care much for it. It it's kind of reminds me of uh, maybe what Trent Reznor might sound like if he did a solo album, you know, because of uh, uh, Nine Inch Nails. It has a little bit of that industrial-ish Nine Inch Nails kind of sound. Uh, and I, I like some industrial rock, but not a lot of it, and this unfortunately just did not catch my fancy at all. Uh, but one interesting thing I found out about it after the fact is that it is a Japanese import. So I'm, I may be putting this one up on Discogs, depending on how much uh, the Japanese version of it is going for. So anyway... Then we have a couple of country albums. They were okay, uh, not terribly great. Uh, Clint Black with his album The Hard Way. I think this was his second or third album, if I recall, from uh, Wikipedia. And then Vince Gill with his album High Lonesome Sound. Uh, a couple of decent songs on both of these albums. Uh, which I cannot remember, though, what they were by looking at the track list. Uh, yeah, I... Yeah, I can't remember what they were, but uh, yeah, I, I can see why they are relatively well, you know, pretty much uh, top tier country musicians in terms of um, record sales and famousness uh, overall. It's just neither of these albums really st struck my fancy. Uh, and then we move on into R&B. Actually, actually, I'm going to do this other one first because I liked it a little bit less. Uh, this one here, Daniel O'Donnell. This guy is an Irish musician, I believe, 
and a, a singer primarily. And this is an album of, as you can kind of tell from the cover, um, Daniel in Blue Jeans is the name of it. Uh, 20 Great Rock and Roll Love Songs. It's covers of classic rock and pop songs. Um, he's a decent enough singer. It's just not unique enough, really, that I, I kind of wonder. Uh, he's been popular since, what, he started recording in the 80s, and he's been pretty steady ever since. But it's like, you know, listening to this, I just kind of don't understand why he's had as long a career as he's had. Maybe this is just in a trough in his career that he just was not terribly inspired or any, or something like that. Because this was pretty much, the, the covers were pretty much just paint by numbers. I did not, I did not find personally anything really interesting in it. Uh, there's another CD uh, very much like this. It was another Daniel O'Donnell, and it's in another one of my bargain bags. It, it could be in this one. Uh, and I'm going to hold on to this one until I listen to that one to see if, you know, both of them back to back might compel me to keep this uh, this one and the other one. I don't know. So we'll find out. As it stands now, though, meh. Anyway, uh, on into R&B, as I mentioned a minute ago. Uh, this is a group called All For One. Uh, they're, they were relatively famous. Uh, the big hit off of this album is I Can Love You Like That. Excellent uh, R&B song. Fantastic. Uh, from the 90s, one of the best R&B songs from the 90s is I Can Love You Like That. And there was, I think there was one or two uh, songs on here that was, uh, maybe not. I, I don't recognize any of them by their titles, the song titles. So I think I Can Love You Like That was the only noteworthy hit. A pet peeve of mine, though, with this CD is the track listing on the back is not in order of the, the order that the songs appear on the album. As you can see down here, it says, See Label for Sequence. Why would you put the songs, list the songs here, in any order other than the order they appear on the album? That's one of my big pet peeves, along with, uh, as I mentioned, was it in the, my last video, um, albums that don't have track listings on them at all? This is like the second worst thing you can do with a track listing, is put it out of order. Really, people, come on. Anyway, <laughs> rant over. Uh, next one, uh, the next-to-last CD in this collection, which I found pretty interesting. It's by a group called Ringside. And these guys were kind of had some... Uh, how do I want to say it? Slightly EDM or electronica elements in the uh, rock and pop songs. Um, an interesting sound, kind of a unique sound. And uh, I'm, I'm going to hang on to this one, given a few more listens, because uh, some of the songs were pretty good. And... Another interesting thing about this group is one of the members, although I think he does, he's more of a production, uh, more of a producer role than anything else, I think he does songwriting as well, is the actor Balthazar Getty. And I think that's him. I believe that's Balthazar Getty, and I, I never knew that he was in a rock band or had uh, musical uh, inclinations. So, kind of a cool thing. I've seen a couple of movies that he was in. So, And then the... Uh, Winner, winner, chicken dinner for this batch of CDs is one that kind of caught me off guard. I did not expect much from this guy. Uh, Paul Sebar, or maybe Sebar, is his name, and uh, The Get Go is the name of this album. And he's kind of a, he's got a bit of a world music sound to it. Uh, he, I mean, he does a little bit of everything. You can, there's some jazz, some reggae, some pop, some, a little bit of world music, maybe some African inspired. Uh, songs here, some r and I mean, this this album goes all over the place, and it's very interesting, very unique, and it's it doesn't feel disjointed at all, even though the songs, uh, pretty much every song is in a different genre. So, uh, and as I've mentioned before on my channel, I kind of like those albums that really stretch out their legs and, uh, you know, take a lot of different influences and uh, put them together. So, yeah, I kind of like this one. I don't know that I will go looking for any of his other albums, but, uh, yeah, very interesting stuff, Paul Sebar. Uh, I can't uh, name a song necessarily that really sticks in my mind, It's uh, but they were all so good. But, uh, yeah, very in interesting stuff. So three, possibly four keepers. Yeah, I'm still not sure. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that, keep that all-for-one CD. Uh, I like R&B, but I can be a little selective about the R&B that I like. So, uh, anyway... <clears throat> Pretty good stuff in the June grab bag. 
And so now let's take a look at, let's get rid of this question mark and see what's in this bag for real. As I cut it open with my scissors, not sure what else I cut it open with. A chainsaw wouldn't be practical. Anyway, let's cut off the, the excess stuff from the bag, if you will. And, actually, it's kind of fun when I have the uh, question mark facing outward. I'm usually better at uh, drawing question marks and like that than I am here, than I was here. Whatever I'm trying to say. Anyway, let's take a look at this CD. The platters, the very best of the platters. Um, interesting, I actually already have a best of, so I will probably not be keeping this. Uh, it is on the Mercury label. And yeah, I can tell already that most of the track listing of the platter CD that I already have is uh, identical to this. So I will probably not be keeping that one, but they're a great group, excellent group. Then the next one here we have is Ah, Boom Crash Opera. I have heard of these guys, but I have no idea uh, what kind of music they do. These Here Are Crazy Times is the name of the album. And yes, that is a very true sentiment, especially right now. Enough said. Anyway, what do we have here? Onion Skin is the first track, uh, the name of the first track on here. Get Out of the House is track five. And uh, yeah. Oh, it's produced by Jimmy Iveen, so it could be interesting. So, uh, yeah, it's on the giant label, a subsidiary of Warner Brothers. Anyway, next up we have Whitney Houston, I'm Your Baby Tonight. I actually had this, this CD in my hand at um, FYE last week. Almost picked it up and decided not to. There was a reason. So yes, I have her first two albums. This is, I believe, her third album. So yes, I've kind of been hoping to get my hands. Yeah, see, see, uh, when I grabbed these, you know, what was it, 144 CDs or something like that, I ha I obviously forgot what was in the bunch that I grabbed and uh, bagged up. Sometimes I'm surprised even myself. And then we have, oh, John Wesley Harding. The name above the title is the name of the album. So, yeah, I have I have heard of John Wesley Harding, of course, but I don't think I've ever listened to any of his albums. So, uh, 15 tracks on this baby. 15 tracks on this bad boy. We shall... I look forward to hearing what's in that. Then we have... Julio Iglesias with the album Tango. And I'm guessing that these are tango-inspired uh, tracks. So yes, they're pretty much all in uh, Spanish. La Cumparista. El Día Que Me Quieras. How's my Spanish? It's probably not very good. Uh, Volver. And... Adios, Pampa Mía. Anyway. I don't know. I have no idea what those words mean, but... I, I try to pronounce them authentically as much as I can. Anyway, oh, the question mark is upside down. Done. Uh, what have we here? We have Kid Sister with the album Ultraviolet. I think I've heard of Kid Sister before, but uh, we will see. Oh, oh, this might be, uh, sounds like this might have some hip hop in it. Uh, Estelle features on one track, Kanye West features on another track, and CeeLo on yet another. So, so yeah, hip-hop is generally not my thing, but we will see what this sounds like. And the next to last CD, I believe, is... Ah! <laughs> How about that? The other Daniel O'Donnell. Just what? Just uh, I told you there was another one in there. I had no idea I had the right uh, thing. The Jukebox Years is uh, the name of this one. The jewel case is in very much, much better condition than the last one, so. So yeah, oh, they have Obladi Oblada, he sings that, the uh, uh, Beatles song. Hello Mary Lou, the uh, Ricky Nelson classic. So, 
Yeah. All shook up, the Elvis Presley song. So. Mm. I guess I didn't have to wait as long as I thought I was going to have to to uh, see if Daniel o O'Donnell is worth keeping. And now finally, I threw it off to the side so you can't see where I landed. What do we have here? Oh, the Afghan Whigs. Uh, another, yet another group that I have heard of, but I've never listened to. What Jail is Like is the name of the album. And, you know, four, five, six, seven, just seven songs. So this is, looks like an EP. The last three tracks are live tracks. So it is apparently an EP. So, yeah, I guess that does it for uh, that assortment of CDs. So, yes, a, another interesting set of CDs I will look forward to listening to. And they are stacked right up here next to the camera lens so you can get a really good close-up look at the uh, side of the jewel case. Fascinating, I know. Anyway, I guess that will do it for my July episode of Bargain Bag. Thank you you so much for watching. Oh, this video is only 16 minutes long. This is going to be a short video. Spoiler alert. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe to this uh, channel. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. Go back and watch my past videos if you, if you are so inclined. Lots of stuff on there to look at. Uh, four years worth of stuff. And uh, yes, be sure and check out the uh, YouTube friends and acquaintances in my uh, description link down below. All the links to all those channels are there. They're all worth watching. Uh, support them. Give them a subscribe as well. They're worth it. And uh, so, yeah, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.